Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working with Apple series. My name is Carl Pauline and today I'm going to show you how iCloud works so there's no more misunderstanding. Now about a year ago I did a video called Understanding iCloud and I was just going through all the comments recently and I discovered that there is one fundamental problem with iCloud and that's the way that we think it works. iCloud works a little bit differently from other cloud storage systems and that's what I really want to explain to you today so that there is no more misunderstanding about how iCloud works and what its vision, what Apple's vision for iCloud is. Now before we go any further, if you do get any value from this video, then please help me by clicking on that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using Apple's productivity suite of tools, then please subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's go in and start and explain what Apple is doing with iCloud. Okay, so let's start off with what iCloud is. Now to get to this page that I'm at at the moment, you just need to go to iCloud.com through Chrome or through Safari. Now that will bring you to this page probably after you've logged in but it will bring you the, to this page. Now this is a good place to start just to see what you have already in iCloud. So these are the things that you have access to very easily through iCloud.com and that's your mail, your contacts, your calendar and that's iCal calendar, that's not Google calendar, your photos of course, iCloud Drive is where you're storing all your documents and also apps that are using iCloud to store settings and other you know, information plus files that maybe are in there. For example, I use Ulysses as my writing app and Ulysses stores everything in iCloud. All I have to do in Ulysses is turn that on. Then you've got your notes, your reminders, pages, numbers and keynotes of course all go in there. News Publisher is something I have on my account simply because I have my uh, blog and my podcast going through Apple News. You probably don't have this and of course find your iPhone. Now there are a few other things that are going on in iCloud as well and those things let me just go into here. You've got all your device backups, you've got your settings, your passwords, Apple Pay and wallet, apps and app storage. Now these things here are not directly accessible by you. You can't go into iCloud.com and access these things because these things are done on these devices, your phone, your MacBook and your iPad, if you have all three. Now the way that this works is iCloud acts as a unified hard drive. Essentially it's the hard drive for your phone, your laptop and your iPad. But that means, and this is the thing where I've been getting a lot of questions and people get really angry about it, but that means if you delete something from your phone then you're also deleting it from your laptop and your iPad. Remember that it is one unified cloud. Now this is this is largely because the way that Apple are seeing things is we are limited by the size of these devices and therefore we can only get so much storage in. Now I know with the new MacBooks I think you can get up to like six terabytes of space on your MacBook which is an awful lot of space. You can also get I think uh, a terabyte or two terabytes on a new iPad Pro and you can get up to like probably a terabyte on your phone. Um, now that's a lot of stuff, that's a lot of storage but the way that we are now putting everything in the cloud it's likely in the future not to be enough. So Apple's solution is to hand off a lot of the stuff that we're collecting into the cloud and only have access to it when we need it and it's working in the background so you don't necessarily have direct access to it. Now if I go back here you do have direct access to your photos but remember when you go back to your photos what's happening is you delete a photo on your phone it's going to delete on all your devices. You're deleting that photo. Now if you want to back up your photos, if you want to, uh, before you do all this, then you need to um, 
employ an external hard drive. That's what you would have to do if you want a backup of your photos. But essentially, all your photos are here. When you want to look at them, you tap on it on your phone and it will be downloaded from the iCloud. Now, this is how Apple is saving space on your devices. And that's something to keep in mind. Now, as I say, people have been getting really upset. They say, I deleted a load of photos on my phone and now they're no longer available. Yeah, sure. Sure, they're no longer available because all those photos were stored here. So, you know, now you can't get them on here or here. Yeah, everything is stored up here. Now, your device backups, you don't need access to that on a daily basis. But when you actually operate a new phone or you get a new phone or a new laptop or a new iPad, you log in with your iCloud account and then Apple will ask you, do you want to download a backup? And it all comes from here. That's the only time you're likely to need a backup. Your settings and your passwords, again, they're all stored in here so that you have access to them on whatever device you're using. But they are here. They're not here or here or here. You don't have them in three different places. You have them in one place. Delete it from one device and you're deleting it from here. So therefore, these places have no access. And I really wanted people to truly understand that. Your iCloud is not really a backup drive. You can use it. I mean, I use, if I go back again, if I go back to here, I use this, I use iCloud Drive as my drive for all my documents because I only use Apple devices. And so it just makes sense to have access to that. Also, Apple's, uh, my MacBook is actually watching to see which files I'm using and what files that I no longer use are just kept in the cloud. They're not stored on my computer. Now, if I know I'm going somewhere where I won't have access to the internet, then all I have to do is either fail it or download it so that and uh, because once I've downloaded it my computer is thinking oh he's using this and it will keep it a local copy until I I stop using it and then it will be just automatically uploaded in the background so if you start thinking about iCloud as something like uh, well I suppose Google Drive works the same way you delete something from Google Drive you're deleting it from all places that it would be because obviously it's in the cloud and you're com you're managing your stuff from here not from these devices these devices are like a branch to the main trunk of the whole system so hopefully that's cleared up a lot of where people have been really struggling with with how to use iCloud if you need additional backup if you want the ability to have an independently backed up files or photos or anything then you need to employ an external hard drive because that way you will have it on a specific device if not, then you are at risk of losing something if you delete it on one of these devices. It's going to delete it on all your devices. Hopefully, that's cleared that up. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you for watching this video. Now, I'm very excited to tell you that the 2022 edition of my Create Your Own Apple Productivity System course is now available. This year, we're utilizing the brand new features in Reminders and and notes. We're going to be looking at how you can use the tags to create an even better productivity system. We're also looking at how iCloud comes into the picture and your calendar. This is a complete productivity and time management setup that if you're in the Apple ecosystem, I can guarantee is going to make your life so much easier. No more overwhelm, no more stress, no more forgetting events or tasks. It's all going to be there in your own system that I show you how to build. It also includes the time sector system and my brand new notes organization system, Capra. Okay, I hope you get time to join this course. And don't forget, if you're already enrolled in this course, my promise to you is every year it's a free update. I hope you enjoy the course and it'd be lovely to see you in there.